How's that? Hi. I knew I knew everything was going to be all wrong. So I think it's fixed now. I can see levels. No sound in the Netherlands either. <laughs> it's What Up Wednesday, Keely Dunn, FH Umpires, FHU 13. That's what who you are. And I'm glad you're here. Apologies for the technical delays. I have moved my system. What the hey? Do not change scenes on me like that. I, it's pandemonium here. It's pandemonium. Okay. So today we are, we've got a couple special things going on, not just where I'm sitting, but all the things. And we will be holding an all access watch party in the discord server when this live stream concludes. So if you're not yet a member, please hop on in. It's fhumpires.com forward slash ds. And yes, you will get to join in. We are going to replay. Fingers crossed, everything goes well. <laughs> Netherlands, India. Okay, so you can hop in there. If you're not yet a member, please get in there as soon as you can so that you can get situated. You can agree to the rules. You can get a third team role. You can see where the voice channel is. And then you can join us when we're done. So I hope that works. Yay, so I'm back. Okay, everybody's there. Okay, this is what we're doing today. We are going to talk about a VR obstruction before uh, the goal. We're going to talk about... A barrier breakdown and a backstick interception. And I've got a couple things in my back pocket just in case we get to it. But I, I'm really not sure if any of those things are going to work. Oh, there's my... There's my, my songs. <laughs> I need my songs, but I don't think they're working. Oh, they're, they're just coming up now. Let's see. I'm going to turn them a little louder today because I feel like I need it. I feel like I need a little more backup with all the things going on. Okay. Oh, let's get into the content, shall we? For fun and giggles. Here we go. A video referral for an obstruction before a goal. Did you see this one on the Into socials the at all? Here we go. Oh, 
salute the first contact was inside the 23. So now it's been on the big screen though, and they're making the point that they can refer it, but it's been on the big screen. However, I guess they'd already asked the question. Okay, It looked like Jack Waller just slipped over. So this is when Waller gets it. Is there now any contact that means he falls over because of the contact? My bad. 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 Again, that then is two players coming together. Can't see how this can be given as a foul. He's throwing the ball away anyway, never would have got there regardless. Lim, yes. there is no clear reason to change your decision. Yes. You may award the goal and GB lose their referral. There is no clear reason to change my decision. Oh, no. okay. Three, three, three. I'm talking to your captain. Yeah? So, yeah. Oh, that was okay. That's my favorite part of the whole thing. I don't know if you could hear Lim very clearly there, but he said, Mr. Creed, I'm speaking with your captain. Mr. Creed. <laughs> I'm going to send him a note and say, hi, Mr. Creed. I'd like to talk to your captain, please. So this was a, uh, this I think was the go ahead goal in, late in the fourth quarter in this game. And there was quite a bit that I cut out there because there was some lengthy discussion as to whether the foul happened inside or outside the 23. That's going to become really relevant when we talk about the next scenario about to happen because this actually is later in the game than the scenario we're going to talk about next. And why I chose to do it in this order? Eh, who knows? Who knows what the real deal is? So... The poll, as it goes up, is going to involve uh, a few choices for you uh, as to whether you think that this is a play-on situation, whether there is a free hit for the attack or the red team. Okay, GB. Even though it was a defender and they're inside their 23, they have the ball, they're technically on attack. Very confusing, I know. Uh, whether you think perhaps there was a free hit for what was then the attack, which is India, blue, at that point. Cards, I don't know. I can't remember what all the options are. But the video referral was exercised and GB lost the referral on uh, Vanu's decision here. So let's break this down from principles. And I'd like to hear your comments here. Uh, as we're working through and find out how it's all gone. Okay. It looks wrong then, uh, says Steven. Newest yellow member, by the way. And it still looks wrong. Okay. And Morena Stefan. So let me know what you're thinking about this. And we're going to break it down. So from a rules perspective, what are we looking at? We're looking at either obstruction or interference. Okay, basically that uh, that the red player was obstructed from reaching the ball from the body contact by the defender. And remember, what we're looking for is it's the body contact here is not the issue. It's whether there is a disadvantage that results from that. So let's really focus on whether there is a disadvantage that occurs from this. Am I giving you a hint? I might be. Okay. The principle being we don't want players just blocking others off from reaching the ball. But at the same time, if a player decides that they're going to play the ball off in a direction and then try to run through or very close to their opposing player and there isn't much contact, well, maybe that isn't a foul there. So let's see what y'all are saying. Not hearing anything yet, so, hmm. 
Let's go. I'm going to do this and I'm going to break this down. I need to mute that. Okay. So I'm going to really slow this down once we get to a replay section. Okay, here we go. I think from the first angle, we get a very different picture here. But now what we have is a player who's played the ball. It's up in the air here a little bit. And at the point of the contact, he's played the ball off in this direction. From this angle, it looks like there's a significant amount of contact. But when we watch from this angle, okay, he's already played the ball up and away at this point, right? And this is the contact right here. You need to judge in a moment like this, when you have this similar scenario on the pitch, how much of this body contact actually prevents this player from reaching that round object there. And as I step through frame by frame, okay, his foot's coming out at this point. He's sliding. So did the contact from the Indian defender take the attacker off his feet in that moment? Okay. Make it such that he wasn't able to regain his footing properly so that, and, and that caused the slide and then he wasn't able to continue running. Hi, Luke. Cat doesn't see a disadvantage. It's a play on for Stefan. For Cat, England player lifted the ball skillfully and then ran into the Indian player. Play on for you. Dweezil Delgado, look, first of all, excellent tag. Second of all, <laughs> welcome. Glad you're here. Let's see. Uh, oh, it's Raj. <laughs> You're watching the live match between India, but we're, but we're doing, we're doing a watch party, Raj. You, you have to get into the server. We're doing a watch party together after this, which will be at like, I don't know, four o'clock in the morning for you. So, okay. I get it. I get it. Just no spoilers. Okay. If you can, if you need to spoil it, I understand. Cat, for you, it looked as though the England player was already following when they both turned around and he slipped in your opinion. Jenny, play on because blue and red clash. Neither have possession. It's a 50-50 Russian entanglement in real, real time. The slow-mo looks different. GB. I did say GB, didn't I? Did I screw up? If I screwed up, my greatest apologies. I'm doing my best. When they wear all red like that, it's really difficult. But I tried to say GB. Sorry. Now I'm all self-conscious about what I've done. Okay. So for me, I see the same thing as I've seen in all this. And Steven, this isn't to say when you say it looks wrong. Yeah, it looks bad. It looks like something has happened. But we really have to parse out whether that contact was what caused the GB player stopped him from reaching the ball after he played the ball away. That was pretty minimal contact. And for that to be something that would cause that player to fall in that moment. Nah. Just nah. For me, there is no disadvantage either. That's what I'm saying. Oh, it was yours. Cat. God, we had this conversation in the server. There you go. Okay, so we're going to... We're going to breeze through this. That that amount of contact there is just... It's just pretty small. 
The other thing I want everybody to think about, because the commentary that, you know, the, the feedback I got on the socials pretty quickly was, there was a bump. That's no goal. There's a bump. There's contact. There's whatever. Work through it. Start with what the rule is. And the word obstruction is really important because it causes us to look at what it's not about contact. It really isn't. It's about whether a player is stopped, is prevented, is impeded from reaching the ball by a stick, by a body, by another player on the same team. And in indoor, by the boards. Okay. Peter, uh, GB player puts the ball in the air, but changes its direction to being behind the line of the end player, puts it out of reach. Play on for you. Gary, blue arm went into red, took him off balance. No, <laughs> sorry. Let's, let's, let's go back to the, to the, the replay and look at how much contact there is. Okay. From this angle. Who goes into whom? What's the order here? If anything, the red player puts his arm into the India player first, the blue player. Okay. Already on, Steve. Nice cat. Can you have that as a position for all poles? Oh, I, I haven't seen what all the poll options are. I can't wait to see what it is. Whoops. <laughs> that should be interesting. <laughs> oh, now I see. <laughs> Party on. Excellent. I love it. Good job. Alistair, play on for you. The GB player made a nice move, but had to follow the ball around the India player, but didn't. The India player turned on the spot. No obstruction. GB player was off balance and fell into the... Yes. It was just one of those things. So let's two minute warning this because I'm moving fast today. That's right, friends. I'm moving fast. And pull. Struggle bus. That was a long time for a little. A little responsiveness there. Okay, so what did you all say? Where's my, there it is. Every day I'm struggling. What's your call? Play on for 72% of you. Free hit attack to red for 23%. Free attack to blue for 3%. That would have really broken down their advantage. I assume what you're talking about is that in that moment, you saw either an obstruction on the very first contact or on the second when Wallace was falling to the ground and took down the India player, that you're going to play on that advantage all day, every day, twice on Sundays. And that is a complete pull from 25% of you. We talked about this last week, how not only do you have the umpire in the pitch making one observation, but you have the video umpire also seeing it the same way through slow-mo and through at least two angles, maybe more. So the question we should be asking ourselves and starting off with after we've gone through what is the rule, what is the purpose of the rule, what factors are we looking for? Was the ball playable? Was it on the player stick? How much contact was there? What direction were the players facing? Um, what attempt was there by the defender to play the ball, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You go out through all those things and then we have to consider when we're looking at this, why did the umpires in this situation make the decision they made? And that's two very experienced umpires who made the determination that it was a play on situation. So it's worth taking that into account and challenging yourself, regardless of who you cheer for. Why did they come to that conclusion? 
detach from the result and look at the factors involved and try to look at what the meaningful disadvantage was in that situation. So does play on mean all the party goers? Yes. You came into a poll, but didn't see what the discussion was on. Um, yeah, there you go. Okay. Thanks everybody for participating. Let's get some more votes the next time. Okay. This is all about participation and getting on board and developing the consensus. And I hope everything that I said there made some sense. As you can tell, I'm trying out a new format for the show and I'm trying to get through some of the content earlier. I hope you like it. Thank you, Chris Pelmore, for this very, very good idea. Okay, so the next thing I wanted to do after this was, okay, promo, okay, all topics. Okay, VR obstruction, all right, oh. I would like to welcome some new friends to the FH Empire's third team. We have, first of all, the fine Richard May. Richard, thank you very much for joining in. Uh, we had occasion to meet in Bristol at the chat that I did when I was over there in, oh my gosh, April now. And you've gone and signed up for green and we really appreciate your support. And I look forward to getting to hear more from you and finding out what we can do in the community to help support you. But not only that, we also have, yes, two, two new yellow members. <laughs> the confetti's actually kind of working today. It's nice. The aforementioned Steven Derberg, I am so glad that you jumped in and Jorn Vandenboss. Now this is really fun because Steven has been lurking, as he, as he told me, observing. I prefer observing for ages. And then asked a question and joined the server, asked a question, question got featured on What Up Wednesday, and then boom, he was signed up just like that within hours. And I was like, whoa, community journey, just sprint. So exciting. Contrast with Yorin. Yorin's been around for a really long time. Well, Yorin, how long have you been in the server? Like at least a year. And he's been quiet and sometimes he pops in and contributes and I really appreciate what he has to say. And he just had to wait until he really felt comfortable. And he's like, you know what? Now is the time. I'm ready to become a yellow member. So thank you both for joining up and let's get to work. But before we get on to the next topic, I do have to give an honorable mention for FH, FHU3T. What did I, what did I call this? I call this the Outstanding Service Award. Rachel. I mean, come on, friends. Ha, how you like that? Look at those nails. Oh my goodness. Rachel, you're amazing. Thank you so much. Okay, next topic. Let's get on to our next topic. Same game. Earlier. This was the goal that tied. Little jumps, you know, notice it's got to be a bit more into the well, they've taken that from their opposition great Britain. And as a result, gets a... Uh, Oh, huge benefit from it. Warlord scores! Oh, I think you need to come back and refer this. The initial free hit down in front of Charlie. the box. Charlie. 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 Which looked like he got five metres in front of where it was with the whistle gone. That's what they're asking for. The Empire is saying it's an outstanding hat trick. Let's have another look at this. The, the free hit was with there. It's, and now he's got, it's out of shot, it's that far ahead of play. It's out of shot of our cameras. Man, the frame rates are terrible. Okay. Let's hear what you have to say, friends. This, this one is, is really difficult. And for everybody who 
might get on my case a little bit and say, Keely, you're always there backing up the umpires. You're never, you know, you're, you're always taking their side and you never criticize them or tell them they're wrong. I'm definitely going to say that this was a mistake. <laughs> you guys go ahead and vote all you want in the poll. But this is not something that we want to see. And if you watch the Commonwealth Games last year, we saw very similar scenes with the almost same teams. At that point, it was England and India, not GB in India. They definitely try this on as much as they can as a tactic, which is to take the ball as quickly as they can. They're trying to counterattack. This is what they want to do. And so they push the envelope like a mother. Okay. Hi, Gary. Good to see you. And that was tough. So Simon's going to get right to the heart of the matter. There's no question the ball's taken from the wrong spot. But what Simon's noticed is the ball was hit or the ball was played after the foul by the Indian player. So card the Indian player and bring the free hit attack back is what he's saying. Simon Webb, this cannot be referred, right? It was not in the 23 meter area. You do think the umpires got it wrong, but not on video referral. It was out of the terms of reference for the video umpire. That's absolutely correct. So that's the next thing that we have to keep in mind. And this is what the conversation's going on right now between Ahmed and Harmanpreet is that it can't be referred. And these players, I don't know why they don't know this because they literally had these same arguments at the Commonwealth Games. <laughs> and nothing's changed about the video referral video review regulations for Rachel the envelope was pushed too far it took out an extra two players exactly so whenever we're talking about things about ball placement we're going to look at who was cut out by that the place where the free hit was taken from and Rachel's absolutely right. So we're going to look here. Okay, so this, this is the spot of the foul. Okay, it's a foot. That definitely happens. And, oh, sorry. And then stick obstruction here. Okay, so this is about where the ball needs to be taken from. And the ball is played away by this Indian player to this point here. Okay, it's this player here who then takes the free hit into this space so this player has fouled has played the ball after the whistle and that's the player who needs to be carded but you also have as uh simon rightly points out there are two extra players especially this one here who gets cut out because he's higher and he's behind or in front of the line of the ball as it gets taken from and it should have been taken from more in back in that area there Okay, that's where the free hit should have been taken from. So we're okay if this dude gets caught out, but we're not okay if these two get caught. Does that make sense? Okay, Steven, <laughs> Steven's having fun with autocorrect today with his typos. You didn't see the blue stick at the first live watching. You think it should have been a reset. And if the blue nudge was seen live, a card. Yep. I agree. Luke, the ball was way more than playing distance from where the foul was. The umpires had every opportunity to reset. Okay. So, and I, I just want to detach this language a little bit because the reason why this isn't referable is because we know that many things can happen in between 123 and the opposing goal. So this goal doesn't come from an umpiring mistake. There is an umpiring mistake and a series of events that leads to a goal. Okay? That's very important to me that we get that right. However, it's still an umpiring mistake. And I want to talk about why it happened. Okay, so I'm going to go back to 
to this shot here because I think this is probably where we're going to get. Let's see if I can scroll this back. Okay. Mission control positioning. What is one of the things that I harp on all the time? The ball has now been taken and it's been, this hasn't, hasn't been a quick transition to get the ball over here on this sideline. For me, if you are the supporting umpire here, this is, this is one of those sort of flexible responsibility positions, but I don't believe that you're helping anybody by being this wide on the pitch in this moment. You have to be in here in the center. If you are, you are now only like, what's the distance between these points? And especially because you're probably going to move up a little bit. So you're actually going to be, if you're about here instead, let's see, I'm kind of skewing my morphs here, but if you're here, are you able from 30 meters away to control this situation? Yes. Okay. Traditional positioning says that you've cut the field on this kind of line. Okay. And all of this is for the controlling umpire, for Ahmed to take care of. But that's ridiculous because Ahmed is like, oh, um, this guy is going to bomb an aerial 70 meters and it's going to fall into my circle. There is no way that he can be up here and be saying, oh, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to handle this schmazel in here. Absolutely not. The other thing is, is that because he needs to be deeper, there's going to be bodies in his way. Okay. And maybe if I, I let the scroll go a little bit. Right now, he's got one, two, three, there's more, there's more, there's all these players who he has to look through in order to handle this situation. But if Lim is the supporting umpire is inside, he has got what is essentially front side positioning on this. The ball's moving away from him, but he doesn't have any bodies in his way. So he can manage this. He can see everything that happens. He can see the stick, the pushes the ball away and plays the ball after the whistle. Okay. It's, it's really, really difficult to pin that on the umpire who has to be taking care of their mission critical spot, which is their circle down in the other end. Okay. This is the fluid trading of responsibilities that I'm talking about. And I mean, by the time we're seeing this play break, and it goes into the circle. Look, this is good. <laughs> this is very good for Ahmed to get there on the break and be that deep. And in order to do that, he's quick, but he's not that quick. He left early the way that he's supposed to. And he has to leave that responsibility for monitoring that play to his colleague so that he can deal with this, right? So for me, a big component of why I'm so insistent on teaching about mission critical positioning is so that we can avoid instances exactly like this. Okay. Let's see what y'all have to say, <laughs> but it's delightful, Steven. Don't worry. Just spread the love, spread the love. Didn't the Indian player play the ball before or after the whistle, after the whistle. Yeah. So I'll go back to the. That. Okay, so that's after the whistle. Okay. It's not miles away, but it's enough of a portion of a mile away that it creates the opportunity. Okay. Yeah, it's, I just, you, you know, you know what I'm working on here, Luke, is, is just a real precision about the way we express ourselves. That is going to change culture. 
that's going to change how people perceive how we're doing our jobs, why we're doing our jobs and how well we're doing our jobs. Okay. So let's be very, very clear. Mission critical. Did I say control? Oh, come on. Y'all know I'm drunk. It's fine. What happened? Anyway, MCP. Are y'all down with MCP? Yeah, you know me. Okay. I'm going to wrap up the poll. And let's see what's going on here. Oh boy, I'm really struggling to get these. Y'all can't wait until the last minute to end these, to, to vote. I just saw the percentage change here, friends. Okay, I need to get this out so you don't think I'm talking about the last thing. End poll, end poll. Just end the poll. Just end the poll, YouTube. Mission control is the Discord server? I don't know what you're talking about. If I've screwed up somewhere, somebody just message me in the Discord server, please. Oh no. We're getting there. Am I going to get a more efficient way of doing this someday? Probably not. I don't know why it keeps... My windows keep disappearing. I'm just going to say it from here. 66% of you want to reset free hit to the tax. So you probably didn't in that moment see that the free hit that the ball had been played after the whistle just resetting it there is a manifest disadvantage okay that's not enough it's not enough to do that in that moment because what you're doing is you're you're taking away i mean you're you're properly replacing the ball but you're going to take away the chance that the attackers have and the way the manner in which that the ball the play is broken down by the defenders is just exactly what they want to do. So that's going to lead to a ton of frustration. And we don't want that. Because frustration leads to anger and expression of that. So there you go. It says mission control. I don't know. Uh, that's a good question, Peter. We, uh, I, I don't know exactly who it was and it could very well have been Ahmed but in that moment if he's the if he's headlining it to his circle one of the things that if you're doing MCP you're gonna say bye to your colleague you're gonna say I gotta go have my back and the supporting colleague is gonna say I got this you go you run and you're gonna fluidly trade control and primacy over certain areas not based on where it is on the pitch those little diagrams that we draw nice but really not effective in helping us make better decisions so we want something that's actually going to serve the game in that sense so we want to make sure that we are communicating back and forth even though the ball's in the same place from the free hit to where the free hit is taken from, you're going to flip that responsibility off to your colleague and make sure you get there. You went for a card, Stephen, as the blue stick. Yep. <laughs> so I, I, don't, I don't know what's happening with your phone, but you, you need bigger keys on your phone. Okay. Thanks very much for all of that. But that does take me to just making sure, in case you weren't sure, this is where you can get to mission critical positioning. FHMPars.com forward slash MCP. If you want to learn more about why I'm so passionate about this and why I believe that this is the answer to us modernizing our approach to the game to keep, well, I mean, it's too late for us to keep pace. We actually just need to catch up with what's been happening in the game over the last 25 years now, 
more than 20, 27 years since offside was abolished in 1996 we have not changed the way that we position ourselves on the pitch despite no offside despite aerial balls despite the pace of the game absolutely skyrocketing in that time if you want to keep pace with the game this is where you want to go okay let's get on to our next topic when is an aerial over you guys it's it's only 42 minutes in and i'm on my third topic this is going really well this was gb china late last week Hey, and while y'all are watching this, I'm going to address Simon's point here. Okay, so Simon's talking about how a pitch side photographer noticed that Ama took his eye off the ball briefly in that moment. Yeah, he did. And I know that what Simon's going to follow up on is otherwise he would not be able to see what's happening where it really matters. Absolutely. Technically, as she's not made okay. clean interception, it's now deemed dangerous onto Jones. In fact, she's actually played it onto Jones, so it, actually for me that is a clear corner. If you look, she gets the touch here, and Jones is obviously close enough that that's deemed dangerous. For me, that is a clear corner. Ahmed, hmm? there's no clear reason to change your decision. You may award the PC, and China lose their referral. Okay, so I'm looking forward to seeing what y'all think of this poll. Because this, there's, there's a couple facets to this aerial decision. The first one being, of course, we're talking about whether the aerial itself, first of all, whether we have an initial receiver. So the ball actually lands in between two groups of players. And this is one of the reasons why I don't like the language of landing zone. Everybody likes to talk about landing zone. I don't care. First of all, the ball may not ever even land on the pitch. Land immediately infers contact with the ground. <laughs> and as we've seen, players could receive it in one place and then keep playing it up in the air using 3D skills and go off on a tear. They could deflect it off in a different direction the way that has happened here. So it's not about uh, landing. It's about receiving. So where is the receiving area? Because a receiving area indicates that there's an initial receiver. Like we're looking for an initial receiver in a receiving area. And the receiving area changes based on the trajectory of the ball. Because now that the ball can be received at any height, as long as it's safe, there's a continuum spectrum range. There's a range of places. Instead of one little droplet on the ground, there's actually a range that it's possible that a ball could be received. Okay, so please stop talking about landing zones. Start talking about receiving zones, receiving areas. I'm not going to get mad about that last part definitely the receiving part. Thanks for being here, Stephen. See you on the replay. Simon, what do you got? Had the China player brought the ball down, then they she might have gotten the free hit defense, but deflecting it towards the attacker was dangerous. And Rachel, not sure. You need help from the rules interpretations. Now waiting for me to help. Okay. So let's break it down. If there is an initial receiver... That receiver must be given five meters in which to control the ball. The rules say on the ground. I ignore that. Sue me. So let's just scroll this back. Okay. So what we're looking for here, it's probably best if we're at this replay here. Okay. So this is actually the ball on the ground at this moment. So that's the landing zone. Who cares? But the player who's just behind this, okay, she made a stab at the ball, missed. Let's slow this down super slow. 
Okay, missed. Ball bounces on the ground. Now, a question that's often asked is, do we now have a different initial receiver? Can you have more than one initial receiver? Is the aerial over? And to me, the proper question to ask in this moment is, if this player would have been deemed the initial receiver, they've missed their opportunity to bring the ball down. And whether it was a good opportunity or not isn't, isn't really the question. But if not, do we declare this defender, this Chinese defender, the new initial receiver? Because even though the ball bounces, it's going to bounce up in a manner that could create a dangerous situation. So for me, the aerial is not over yet. And people ask, well, how many bounces does it take? And it's like, I don't know. How many bounces does it take for it to be safe? How many bounces does it take before it's at a height at that level of play that two players can safely contest that ball? That's the criterion for when an aerial is over. And at this level of play, even then, the question is, here's the ball up in the air at this point. So I would say that's still at a height that even at this skill level that you need an initial receiver to be given five meters in which to control the ball. But as we're looking at this play, we can see that the attacker is right behind the defender. It looks very flat from this angle, doesn't it? It looks like they're, they're, you know, very, very close to them. Is this attacker interfering with the ability of the defender to safely play the ball? Is this a disadvantage in this moment? I'm going to scroll back because I want to look at the side on angle so we have a better or a different appreciation of what the distance is between the players. Okay, so as the ball is coming in, this angle looks quite a bit different, right? Now we're starting to see that actually the Chinese defender is backing up and shortening the space in this moment, but also the attacker is backing up. So they're not stepping right close to the Chinese defender there. They're stepping away and moving away. And from that sort of distance and from being behind where the ball can be received, I think it's a fair shout to say that even though in a five meter distance that's a radius that's that's pointed on the ground there does that even does that even come through let me let me see if i can can i write better than this so if that is the land er, the, now i'm doing it if that is the receiving area we're not talking about a five meter disc that's painted on the ground instead what we're looking at is there's this receiving area that's kind of here because this player is solidly in front and then there's a player who's tucked in behind. So is this is this player in front able to safely and reasonably at this skill level receive that ball? That's what we're looking for. Let's see what y'all have to say. I'm not sure if I'm explaining this as con as well as I would like to. And Jenny, you would have called the, de the decision on danger. Now you're learning more. Okay. Well, but danger where and to whom? We have to really break it down as to, you know, who's there. And for Stain, definitely dangerous because of the legitimate evasive action that happens there. Well, yeah, I mean, by the time we get to, we get to this point. And actually what happens here is the ball gets actually played right. It, it actually hits Sarah Jones in the chest. So, you know, that's about as legitimately evading as you can get. 
So there's definitely danger there. The question is, should it have been called earlier because this player is infringing? And to me, no. I would hopefully play on in that situation the way that the pitch umpire did and the way it was held up on referral. Let's see if this is... Okay. Defenders back into the space of the attacker. A little bit, but does but just because that she's backing in, does that mean that the attacker was actually the initial receiver on that play? I don't think so. I don't think so because of the angle at which the ball is moving. The trajectory and where it is receivable. Okay. Let's see what you have. Let's see if that's going to end the poll. Oh, it worked. Okay. Two minutes more. This is crazy, you guys. I should do this more often. Although I don't feel like I'm talking to you as much as I normally would. What did you all think? That's the wrong poll. Oh, it's ending the other one. There it is. Okay, let's try this again. There. Okay, so... Okay, so 13% of you, this is interesting. Sorry, I'm like going blank because I'm, I'm trying to parse the results. So 13% of you thought that it was an interception attempt that was within playing distance. So you were declaring in your belief that the initial receiver after the ball had bounced now goes to the attacker. I can see where you're coming from on that, but I'm not sure if that's really correct. Because... We're not looking for players to be in static positions when they're receiving. It's it's a reasonable amount of movement in order to have the opportunity to receive. Players are going to be on the move. It's what they do. It's why they're good. 20% um, of you thought it was no a no clear receiver situation. And I can see that. So you're, you're feeling that either there's no clear receiver or maybe that there's an infringement coming in from behind. That sort of thing. But yes, yeah, 66% of you did agree that it was a penalty corner for danger. So thank you very much for that. And yeah, what do we got here? Gary, your initial gut feeling is that the second red player had the chance to control the ball. If she had done so safely, you would have given her the benefit, but she didn't control it and that makes it dangerous. Yeah. So there's a real tension there that Gary's pointing out about our expectations of a player's ability to handle the ball safely. Now, if that exact, if those exact facts, the ball is coming in at that pace, that trajectory, into that area, the players are that distance away, they're moving to those degrees, but you have a lower level of skill and you're not expecting that player to be able to necessarily control that ball in that moment, then you might have a different result. And that's why it's so maddening for players. And we yeah. have to be very sensitive to the fact that we're looking at eight, 10, a dozen fact issues. And if one of them is different, we end up making a different decision. And then it looks like we're being inconsistent, but it's like, but we're not. Consistency is with what the rule is trying to help us achieve in terms of fairness and the spirit and safety of the game and the promotion of skill and the promotion of awesome things. <laughs> so Vanry's in the, in the audience and luckily I've agreed with her on everything so far. You had a big weekend, like two big weekends where you had a lot of big decisions to make and they must have been, you know, you must have been exhausted. I just, my blood 
my brain gl blood glucose levels would have just been like, Bleh. I know what it's like when I do these live streams and I'm trying to explain it and talk about it and look at people's points and stuff like that. But you're in the heat of the moment. That's just got to be something like that. And Jenny agrees. <laughs> DJ Airhorn for Vanry. The TV angle behind the goal doesn't does not have the GB player in shot, so it gives more context to the distance. That's a really good point, Stefan. White not interfering, and red had lost control. Yep, there you go. And, okay. Good job, everybody. Vanry, we've gotten through four scenarios, I think. Is that four or is that three? Wait, I've lost count. What are we at? No, now we're on four. Okay. I'm having fun. This one's going to be a little shorter. Six out of seven, and the seventh was only because it was missed. Oh, no, he was not. He, he, he was on the ship. I brought it. Yeah, you're definitely getting the experience, right? It's all about the reps. Wow. Interesting. Interesting. So Simon, I cut off all the rest of it because that was important, but I'd love to hear what you have on this one. Okay. Now remember in slow-mo, as Vanny found out a lot and has experienced over all the time that she's been in the video booth over the last few years. And as we talked about, Ayanna has pointed out to us in our big segment on video umpiring. Slow-mo makes everything look more intentional. Okay, so we need to frame this, even though I'm the jerk who's slowed this down as much as possible. Part of it is because I, I really do want to make it easier for us to go through all the factors. Okay, so... What are we looking for here? We're looking for an obstruction and whether this may be an unintentional obstruction. First of all, is it an obstruction? Is it unintentional? Could it be deemed intentional? And if so, what would the remedies be? And that is obviously what's reflected in the poll here. But what we're looking for is the success of the tackler in being in the correct position and taking up the space that they're entitled to take up in time such that the contact can't be deemed to be reckless or is it the other way around? Do they arrive too late? And then we look at what the player has done with their body shape what they've done in terms of taking up more or less space in that moment. Okay, so those are the factors we're going to look at here. And in the end, hopefully, it's very clear that you see that the ball goes off the uh, goes off the left leg of the defender who's gone to ground. The other thing that we're going to look at is if they go into that kind of low position such that they stretch out their appendages. Are you starting to pick it up? So that they block the ball with their body. Did they do so in control of their body or were they slipping? Okay, so that's another factor we look for. Okay, so I'm, I'm trying to be really systematic about how we approach all of the decision-making here, okay? Vanry, you're giving away the answers. <laughs> okay so gary you might be referring to the aerial scenario that you made comments on and that's completely fine and that doesn't mean that the decision that was made in that moment on a pro league match was incorrect or it, it doesn't mean that the decision that you would make at club level would be incorrect you're going to make the correct decision taking into account all of the factors involved right and i support you in doing that. And that's why we talk about these issues so thoroughly. We try to break them down so that you can get to the most accurate decision 
in that moment with those facts that are in front of you at that level of play. Okay. Okay. For Simon, card for the deliberate foot, but the Indian player ran into the Belgian player too. Okay. Do you think, Simon, that had the Belgian player not gone to ground and had his leg stretched on the turf, his legs, if he hadn't been kneeling on the ground like that, do you think there would have been that much body contact after the successful maneuver putting it off his foot or trying to put it around him? Rachel, defender creates a very long barrier, which you would deem to be deliberate as to the outcome, free hit attack, and a yellow card. This is late in the game as well. Okay, so we can we can put that part to bed for sure that we're looking at. Um, I think this is fourth quarter. It'll show up on the screen in a second, I think. Here. Um, yeah, it's fourth quarter something. I'm waiting to see the clock show up again. Yeah, just two and a half minutes left. Okay, Stefan, the defender was committed to where they thought the ball was going. The Indian player changed direction towards the defender. It happened very quickly. Free hit attack and no card. Okay. <laughs> Shiba. <laughs> Jenny, in the old days, your coach forbade you from playing the ball on the ground because it, we caused injuries. Now player do, players do everything at high speed. So did the collision just happen? Let's watch it in real time again. Real time. And for me, I guess because I, I, I've watched so much, and this is about the gathering the data and like watching so much hockey and watching so much hockey at different levels of speed, different levels of skill. These matches are available to us to take in, to understand, to parse, to discuss. This is such an important part of our development. We get reps that normally, you know, back in my day we didn't have a hope in hell of getting all these kind of reps to understand in real time and the first time i saw this live i was like wow that's a yellow card right there because the movement of the defender is i don't care if i miss this ball i'm going to take up a large space and this player is going to be stopped it is reckless as to the result of committing an obstruction. It actually is also an intentional foot. You can go either way. You can go intentional foot. You can go, but because of the amount of control that the defender has in choosing the space that he's going to take, high risk that when you go down like that, that you're going to miss the ball, that isn't like a great attempt that just happens to go awry. There's a high chance that when you commit and you go down on your knees like that, that somebody's going to dribble around you. Reckless as to the result. And I think that's probably what Jenny's pointing out there. Simon, you doubt it was done with the intention to hurt the Indian player. Doesn't matter. <laughs> if it's done with the intention of hurting somebody, then we're in a whole different category of personal penalties, aren't we? Right? We're talking about recklessness to the result that something bad could happen. Reckless to the result that play is stopped with a foul. And that's absolutely, absolutely what's happening here. Okay. But he took the risk that even if he took the ball cleanly, he would still floor the Indian player. But if he takes the ball cleanly and he gets to the space, that's different. He's commit. He's successfully tackled. In order to do that successful tackle, he has to be in the correct space first. He's in the wrong space. And he's sitting on that space. And he is making sure that the attacker can't get around him. So that's the difference here. 
If the Belgian player had been standing up, the ball wouldn't have hit their leg, but the Indian player was still running through. I think he would have... I, I think that he would have bumped, but it sure wouldn't have been that. Okay, I understand what you're saying, but... There's big... Nobody cares, Gary! It's not indoor. <laughs> It's too gay. Okay. You mean free hit India? Um, do, 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 do. It's free hit. Okay. Yeah, you mean free hit. Yeah. Uh, the Belgian player extends their body and causes the breakdown in danger. The Indian player didn't have a chance to change direction. You voted for a free hit and green card, but you're, yeah. It, it's quarter four with two minutes left. <laughs> so at that point, the impact that this tackle attempt has in the game pretty close to being just outside the 23 you're not looking for a green card here okay so look at where it happens on the pitch okay not quite at the 23 but you know close enough okay let's get let's get a poll conclusion i hope you've all got your votes in and remember, this isn't us about this. The, the polls aren't here to say, like, look at all the people who got it wrong. That, that's not it at all. It's to exercise our decision making muscle so that we then can think critically. We have to put ourselves under the pressure of making a decision first. Huh. And here is what we have. So half of you, 52% of you wanted a free hit attack and yellow card. And at least the other, we got up to 90% or 89% with a green. Uh, the rest of you just wanted a free hit attack. And 5% of you wanted the result that happened on the pitch. That's okay. I hope that going through that process, you can see what we're looking for. And you focus on the defender always as a, a tackle is about to occur on the pitch. Focus your view, your vision, not to the fancy ball carrier. Very hard when you've got skillful players on the pitch, but focus on the defender. Where are they placing their body? Are they achieving a space first? Do they make a legitimate attempt at the ball? Are they in front? Okay. Is there a high chance that they're going to make this tackle? And as you're taking all these factors into account, you're greasing your decision-making wheels so that if you see an event like that, you're going to be more able to get to the right decision more quickly. And you're reading the play. And we're back to main. I'll just tie up some of the comments there. Oh, Yaku, yeah, you're coming up. You're coming up. It's good to see you. Gut vote. That's okay. We we vote on our gut all game. All game. So that's okay. Oh, well, that's a good point. Simon is pointing out that there's this thing that you can do right here. I would appreciate it if you're getting value out of this. And if you're liking the new format, new not new format, but getting back to a better format that we get into more of the material faster and all that kind of stuff, please do let me know because I'd like to hear how it's going. It feels a little weird to me. I'm a little, I also have a couple little different pieces of tech going on here that I'm trying to adapt to and I'm feeling a little out of sorts. And I also had a, you know, watch party earlier and we're going to do another watch party very soon in the server. So if you haven't joined the server yet, can I, I, I don't know if this is going to work or maybe I'll just make this face. Polotomo. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't have my Discord overlay, but if it pops up on the bottom, you know what to do. fhmpars.com forward slash DS to get into the Discord server. And I am opening up this watch party to everybody. As long as you agree to the rules. And if you start misbehaving in the voice channel, I'm coming for you. Don, you strained your decision-making muscle <laughs> last week. I think you strained it by over-explaining. 
your decision making muscle. There you go. Hi, Dale. Um, oh, well, when you start with my name, I know I'm in trouble. I said that the Belgian player had collected the ball. Your decision may have been different. Had the Indian player not moved the ball back to the foot, a clean tackle, but the Indian still hits. Yep. The ground. Do I work hard for reckless play by Belgium? No. No. Because the the Belgian player obviously moved to the correct space and did like there's he, he can't get out of the way of doing his job which is to successfully commit a tackle successfully make a tackle I don't the language the language here if they successfully cleanly legally collect the ball and they do so because they haven't made body contact they can't get a, out of the, they can't go oh well the attacker's going in that direction and with the ball i could tackle that or maybe i just need to step out of the way like you can't expect a defender to do that that would be weird does that help i don't know if i explained that well you like the new format all right there's the address make sure you get in there gary the pace this video you like it and it's a yellow trophy smiling I mean, it's a trophy yellow smiling. Okay. I'm liking it too. All right. Let's see where we're at. Um, where's my run of show? I'm lost. Outstanding service award. Um, prom ah, I missed something, but that's okay. We're gonna get we're gonna get to it right now because. Y'all been waiting for it. Y'all been demanding it. And it's finally going to happen here. Simon Dolby, are you ready? Simon, sit down. Sit down, take a seat. Take a seat. I don't want you falling when I do this. Official FHU 3T match shirts are on their way. We are doing pre-sales right now for 15% off and that is happening until July 1st at a pre-sale price. We want to make sure that this is something that people want before we commit to a major manufacturing run because ah, uh, your girl don't have that much money. So we're not going to go tumbling in and ordering, you know, 150 shirts and then find out that nobody wants this ish. If you're concerned about whether I might take the money and run, your girl's here every week. Your girl's in the server every week, every day, most hours, in fact. So if this should not become the runaway smash hit that Simon Dolby has predicted, then don't worry, we will make you good. But if you are interested in trying out our first two colors, of FHU 3T match shirts right here, fhumpires.com forward slash match shirt. I have to sort out shipping, okay? Simon and I, four down and I, we have to get this all like sorted. So there's a chance that I'll come back and say, hi, um, I need like three euro from you for shipping. And that's not fun but it will make a big difference if we have lots of orders so just work with me here okay and hopefully this is all going to work i've never done a pre-sale like this before on a piece of physical goods this is kind of like a kickstarter but it's a whistle starter it's a kick whistler it's a i don't know it's something it's one of those things and hopefully you're interested, so let me know. I want to press some buttons and, and make some sound effects, but I don't know what to do. There you go. The match shirt. Y'all asked for it, and now we have it. Okay. Shipping to essay. Yeah, okay. We're going to have to sort that out. Everything will ship from the UK. So, Gary, if you're... If you've ever ordered anything from the UK before, it's not shipping from Canada. Because, come on, <laughs> that's, that's just outrageous. 
which means it's going to be a while before I get shirts because I'm going to, you know, it's going to be really expensive to get them brought here. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of heads up, but we're going to do things as economic as possible. Shipping is merch is not a profit center for me. I just want to give people what they're asking for. And there's a need for great match shirts, umpiring shirts. So grab them. Oh my God, you've already pre-ordered. <laughs> there you go. Ha, how you like that? Your boy, your boy, Simon, he's in the house. All right. I wanted to pull out this clip because we can play a little bit of what if. <laughs> and this was from the same India-Belgian game. Banri, you were on the pitch. <laughs> Okay, handle this very well. Denayer actually like, went into polite mode by the end of this question, which was nice. Uh oh, we have problem here. Okay, this is tough. This is a tough one. And I gotta say, in the moment when I first started looking at the replays. And I listened to what the commentator said. I got a little bit, the, the flash of the logo of the stick was very distracting. And it was just, it caught my eye. And I was like, ooh, shiny object, stick moving. And when you see the aftermath after the contact and you see the toe of the stick pointing up, you think, oh, whoa. Is what then means that he knows and he here at this moment, wrong. Simon's so describing how the action of just of trying to smack the ball away got, was almost like an admission of guilt. And I'm not sure if that's I'm not sure you can give that. super valid. In, in that instance, I, I can't see from that shot exactly okay. what that ball hits. This for me is one of the best angles. If you're watching I this, hits, but I'm not convinced I can actually see what it hits. Uh, and the way the stick comes up shows you it's hit the back of the stick. <laughs> it's the stick of and then Charlie the goes ahead and, and just, yeah. you know, says, oh, it's obviously well, right, Unfortunately, there's no advice possible. There's no clear shot. So I think stick with your on view decision right, and Belgium so keep the referral. So it was, it was a yeah. Okay, so you can hear that. The result that Lim came to there was that, you know, they checked all the frame rates and checked the angles and he just couldn't tell for absolutely sure. Not absolutely sure, but he didn't have a clear reason to say that it must have been a back stick. So, held to that original decision. Let's see. I really did do it, yes. From the closet. Okay, fine. I'll figure out a way to set up my desk somewhere else in this room so it doesn't seem like I'm in a closet. I've, I've got a lot of room back here. See, I can't even reach the closet from here. Dang it. Okay, Rachel, we'll sort it. We'll sort it afterwards. Okay, I don't know if if that's a problem with it. I, I think that's a problem with the shirts. So... I think there's a couple of interesting things that we want to consider here. And I had enough doubt in watching this uh, entire decision that, let's see, let's go to this. Okay. And I can see why the, the, uh, the attacker in behind uh, had his concerns. And why the why the referral was was requested? Okay. This angle comes in a little fast, so you can see that right. This is pretty much right at the moment of contact, and it would have been really difficult to to sort of see that straight from there. And it's because when he comes up from. The ground, he definitely does have his the toe of his stick up. So that looks one way. Now that angle is really difficult because the ball the the 
camera is panning right at that moment. Okay. This angle is interesting. So as the ball is coming in, I wish I could go frame by frame. Let's see what I can do with this. Right. So as this is coming in, look, oh, I pressed the wrong button. It's sort of like a frame right in there where you can see, am I gonna get it? Okay. Stick here. He's coming in to use the forehand edge of uh, forehand, the, the, the reverse edge of the stick to receive this ball. So right now he's got flat side pointing up in the air. Okay. So once you see this prep coming in, what you want to notice is whether his stick then turns up toe side before he contacts the ball. Okay, right there in that moment as well, he's got flat side up. Pointed straight up. Okay, now it's at this moment that we get a really clear view and we're like, oh, look, toe up logo, all that kind of stuff. And it's because the ball's just behind him. And now it's an awkward sort of body shape for the player to be hitting in. Okay. So this is far, far from clear cut by any stretch. And in the moment, a play on decision is completely reasonable. And as we've seen from the camera work and what we're dealing with is that we really don't see very clearly what's happening. Now, I mean, look at this. This is just like a big, massive blur. So I've slow this down to 0.25 times speed and whatever frames per second I might have 25 I might have 30 here I don't even know but it's not even close because can't like look at that it's like an impressionist painting no clue whatsoever can't tell at all what's happening there. Okay. So what's more interesting as well about this is the decision that you would make in this moment, if you were certain that that ball hit the back of the stick. Okay. And I hope that at this point, everybody would be very clear that that would be that should be deemed as an intentional breakdown of play reckless as to the result. Okay, so he doesn't necessarily, you know, with all intents and purposes, I am absolutely going to play this with the back of my stick. No, but he's being reckless as to whether he could play the back of a stick because of how he's trying to play, how he's stretching, how he's coming in for the back. I don't even know why he has to reach for this ball. Like, it's crazy. He's got a teammate right behind him. Dude, why are you bugging? You don't have to, you don't have to go for that. And I think that's just like a, a, a brain fart sort of moment. But it's reckless as to whether he could have played, he, he used the back stick, which stops something good from happening. I haven't got it done. Okay, good to know. It might be a Simon only purchase. That's not fair. Are you are y'all just buying shirts now and you're not even paying attention to this? If I close the poll, is there gonna be like three results and one of them's gonna be I picked orange? <laughs> That's probably what's happening here. That's gonna be let's see. Oh, that's eerie. Is that working at the same time? Wow. Okay. Good to see you, Jenny. We're almost there anyway. Oh yeah, we're only five minutes away. Okay, so let's see what y'all had to say in the poll. I'm having trouble with YouTube Studio here. It's just 
just not playing fun with me. I did hit and pull. Did that work? There it is. Come on, fam. Oops. 64% of you would have played on with no clear reason to change your decision, just as Lim did. And evidently, I agree, a free hit for the attack, 21%. Okay, friends, and that's why I wanted to bring this up, because if there is a foul, there is no chance that that is a free hit attack. That is either a play on because it's not a back of the stick, or you can't be sure it's a back of a stick, or it's a penalty corner or a penalty corner plus a card. And none of you opted for a card. It's the fourth quarter, you guys. Fourth quarter. These are the things that I want you to consider and prep your decision making for that. I knew this was gonna happen, Simon. I knew it was gonna happen. Can you have one in each color? Yes, you can. Just did. <laughs> Good to know. Okay. I'm glad. I'm glad they're popular. All right. We don't have to go through all the rest of that. But here we are back. Yaku's here and observing and lurking. And I just wanted to bring up that I received a really lovely message. Where is it? Here it is. No. I have to go here. And then I have to go here. So I hope you caught, caught this episode me with this fantastic uh, young man right here. Um, we will link it in, if you're watching the replay, it'll be in a little card up here. It'll be in the stream description as well. And I just wanted to congratulate Yaku on being nominated for the Senior IPT Division II Championship coming up in South Africa. I mean, just such an incredible success story. And even in his eight minute 45 second voice message to me this morning and you're right I was prepping my mate when I was listening and making my toast and stuff so that's exactly what I did while I was listening to your talk um you know he mentioned how happy he was about having the opportunity to serve the game like this and how satisfying it's been for him so big congratulations let's confetti this I'm really proud of all the work that you've been putting in and and the fact that people are seeing these great results and want you to keep going so keep keep working at it keep going congratulations oh dawn why should that never be a free hit attack it doesn't look reckless it's it yes 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 it is Okay, it's just a failed attempt. No, not at that level. Not at that level at all. Okay, there's a defend. I know there's a defender right behind him. Why he? Why he even wanted? Why he thought he had to do that? But he was going for broke. Absolutely going for broke. Okay, so this needs to be. What could have been is that by committing the foul it stops the possibility of that player going into the circle and doing something awesome okay we need to start working on the fine tuning of what it what constitutes breakdown of play for you okay you're welcome okay um we'll talk about that rachel and we'll get that sorted for you Okay, I'm going to deal with one last question because it's 131 and I have the time. I got this question in a week ago. The rules on the goalkeeper leg guards. And this came from uh, my new friend Phil. And my new fr friend Phil asked on the website, just wondering about the rules around goalkeeper leg pads. Can a player, for example, put a picture on their pads? Um... 
He sees Obo offering multicolored pads, rainbow, etc. Would a smiley face or target be legal, or could that be seen as intimidation? Here are the rules about protective equipment and what they must wear and what colors they must wear. Nothing in rule four that you need to know. The specifications in the rules of hockey talk about the maximum width of leg guards and obviously hand protectors and such like that. So the answer to this question is essentially, Phil, that there are no rules about the colors that goalkeepers can or cannot wear. Now, what I should have prepped, and let's see if I can do this really quickly. Uh, yeah. There can be regulations. Okay, and that's good to know. Oh, you can see my run of show. Isn't that fun? Oops. Primary display. I want to show off my fine friend here. <laughs> it's very small. Okay, okay, I'm coming, I'm coming. Here. This is my friend Burgundy Boletsky. Fantastic human being and uh, played for Canada on the indoor national team, as well as having a very successful club career and playing provincial for Alberta. Truly outstanding. Now, if you can't fall in love <laughs> with <laughs> this kind of action, and Bert came to me years ago and said oh look rainbow pads and said so keely i'm i'm thinking of like getting a dinosaur because she played for the university of calgary dinos thinking of getting like a dinosaur painted helmet and that sort of thing like is there a rule against that and i was like nope these are some of the the leg guard uh pads that she's she's sold here's an easter bunny outfit Okay, she's not, she doesn't happen to be playing, but let me find some shots of her actually playing. Okay, look at this. She's in full fuzzy gear. I don't know how she plays indoor with all of this fur, <laughs> but apparently it's, you know, the fur is great for sliding in indoor. And she would ask me like, is this okay? Can I have you know, these things. And I said, as long as it doesn't make your helmet significantly larger, I can't see any reason why you would be in a situation where that would be considered advantageous. Look at those patterns. Okay. So the question as to whether this could be considered intimidation somehow that Phil asked, can a smiley face, a target, a rainbow be considered intimidation? If these things are intimidating to anybody, this might not be the sport for you. With hard balls and sticks and big spaces and that ball flying around at high rates of speed. Th this just isn't the place for you. And that's okay. Hockey, uh, we try to say hockey's for everybody, but maybe it's not maybe it's not for everybody but it really is for fine people like this person now of course some of these outfits are more for um costume and such this one's one of my favorites uh oops i clicked on the wrong one i meant to bring up this one I was like, yeah, that's probably not going to work. But it comes down to local regulations for your competition and what a particular tournament or competition director decides in that moment. Okay. Um, 
too much extra, but all the fur, all the fuzz, totally fine. Uh, Jamal knows exactly who we're talking about here. You have the Furby set pick from the CICs. There you go. Very nice. I have no idea what that means. Okay. <laughs> yeah, right? I'm totally here for it as well. Couldn't be from a better human being. Trust me. Stefan, you've always wanted to have a Mandalorian looking setup and goal minus the cape. It would look be great to look like Boba Fett. Yeah. Why not? And here's the thing. It's like, this is, this is your choice. You get to decide how you want to present yourself. And if you want to have more fun, if that doesn't distract you from your own performance, well, go nuts. Oh, Don. It must have an impact on the way the ball bounces off those furry leg guards. But there's no rules as to the composition of what leg guards need to be. They used to be Kane. But Kane hasn't been outlawed. Oboe has a variety of different densities of pads which change the way that the ball bounces off them. Right? We're not out here looking for reasons to stop people from enjoying their hockey. We're just going to pick out the things that would truly make something unfair. And Jamal says, nope. All right. Thank you very much for joining in today. It was a blast. I had a very good time despite the hiccups at the start. It was very good. Advertising, there are rules that will depend on your local competition regulations. So at international level, there are very strict rules about where the advertising can be, how big it can be, who it can be, where it can be placed, blah, 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 blah. Okay. But that is an issue for regulation. It is not in the rules of hockey. And I harp on this about the distinction between what is a rule and what is a regulation. And we as umpires need to be very clear as to how those two things are different because we are there to enforce rules and regulations that are within our orbit but a regulation that's somewhere else in the world we don't enforce that one and we get confused as to the difference of the two and it was fine yeah nobody wants to be a buzzkill what's the number one rule about FHU3T don't be a dick if you were a more active goalkeeper there you go okay excellent Always check your local regulations, but otherwise go nuts. Exactly. There you go. All right. We are going into the server to watch a replay together. If all goes well, if the match is still going and it, it, anyway, okay. I don't want to talk about that part here, but we're going to go watch Netherlands, India. So if you haven't joined up yet, fhmpars.com forward slash DS, get in there. I will facilitate as best I can. Hopefully everything will work. And I know it's late over there in the UK and Europe. I can't help it. There's only 24 hours in the day, but I'm really appreciative that you chose to spend some of those 24 hours with me over the last hour and a half. And we will do this all again next week. Until then, have a great hockey weekend. Bye. <laughs>